Sure. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'm Hina, um, Associate Research Fellow at STPI, and um, I welcome you all to the uh, on today's seminar on um, COVID-19 lessons learned from China. We have our honorable um, guest with us, um, and um, someone should be joining soon, Dr. Abed and um, will be joining at 3 p.m. Um, due to his uh, other meeting. Oh, uh, so um, we have a representation from uh, Embassy of China, um, Deputy Deputy Chief of Mission, Ms. Peng Chun Shui. So we welcome you, uh, Madam, on the for, for the seminar and thank you for your time. And we also hope um, and um, I uh, expect um, we, that uh, the ambassador of um, the Chinese embassy shall also be joining. Um, I think around. Yes, um, so we also have <clears throat> Mr. Harun Noman with us from Wuhan. Uh, he'll be, tell, he'll be uh, sharing his experience on uh, his volunteering in Wuhan. He's a Pakistani national and the rest he can uh, introduce himself. Uh, we have our joint executive director, STPI, Dr. Vakash. Uh, he should be giving us the opening remarks and uh, we shall begin with today's um, talk. So over to you, Dr. Vakar. Thank you, Dr. Hina. Uh, it's really uh, a pleasure to welcome Excellency as well as all the other distinguished uh, fellow panelists here. Uh, first of all, let me uh, of course, uh, uh, join in uh, Dr. Hina's remarks and uh, really express my gratitude for taking time out uh, for this uh, important meeting, as well as as well as making yourself available to give your thoughts uh, on this very uh, concerning uh, subject and certainly very timely at this point. I think uh, the objective of this uh, meeting is extremely important. One is that. Uh, Pakistan needs to sort of use the current evidence which is available at the moment uh, from China as well as from other countries uh, regarding the coping strategies which they have used in the crisis phase. Uh, second, uh, I also believe it will be important to learn from all of you uh, how have uh, social safety nets uh, as well as disbursements to the beneficiaries, particularly the poorest of the poor, uh, have been designed uh, in other countries. I understand that these are not just related to health sector, but go well beyond uh, the, the health sector domain. How are firms being, uh, private enterprises being supported? How are formal and informal labor markets being supported? So again, that is another uh, objective uh, which we would like to hear uh, from all of you. Uh, uh, today. Uh, thirdly, I believe that there is a case for uh, regional partnership, global partnership, uh, while of course uh, uh, countries are helping each other bilaterally, uh, we are extremely grateful to the help which has been provided by the government of China. Uh, but uh, uh, in, in my opinion, and I was discussing with colleagues yesterday as well, uh, there is um, uh, a greater need now to embark on uh, uh, an agenda for global partnership, not just from the viewpoint of helping uh, each other, uh, which is of course being designed by several multilateral uh, institutions such as uh, the IMF's Rapid Finance Facility, but also in terms of sharing of experiences and sharing of expertise, uh, technologies, uh, health sector interventions which would be available at a global level uh, to help uh, the countries which struggle. Some of the countries would of course be late in coming. Uh, uh, for some, uh, COVID-19 uh, incidents is just starting uh, to set in and of course they'll be looking at such learning uh, uh, much more uh, with, with much more interest. So with these remarks, it's uh, uh, back to you Dr. Hina. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vakar, for the for, for your remarks and especially um, sharing with us the objective of um, today's uh, seminar. And uh, in the light of um, your um, 
um, thoughts. Uh, we would like to welcome Mr. Harun Sharif, um, who is um, a former board of investment, um, the chairman of former board of investment under Prime Minister Imran Khan. And um, he's a renowned economist and um, been serving the very um, key person under this China-Pakistan economic corridor and for the establishment and regulation of special economic zones. So uh, we welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Okay. Um, so um, for, for today's panelists, we have, of course, Mr. Harun Sharif. We have um, uh, Ms. Pang uh, from the Embassy of China. We have uh, Harun Noman from Mohan. Uh, we have um, the director, uh, um, China Study Center, STPI, Mohammed Shakil, and uh, we have um, several, um, all the other <clears throat> colleagues from STPI and outside who, who has joined us for this um, great, um, uh, hopefully um, fruitful discussion over the talk. So um, uh, let me give a floor to our um, honorable um, guest from the embassy to share her point of views, first of all, and um, let's uh, listen to um, her remarks on this um, today's topic. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Dina. So I'm very glad to be here this afternoon for this very important meeting with uh, uh, our Pakistani friends from all sectors of life to, to talk about this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, actually, as as far as all of you know, that the COVID nineteen outbreak uh, that caught us all by surprise, I think, from the very beginning. But uh, after the outbreak of the COVID nineteen, I think the the Chinese government and the Chinese people have uh, have taken. A lot of uh, measures to we are called in China of a uh, collective uh, uh, control and uh, treatment uh, measures to counter this uh, the outbreak of the of the pandemic. Uh, I think all of you have have seen that under the strong leadership of the party. China, CPC, Chinese Communist Party, and, and the Chinese government. Uh, we have put the people's life and health first, and uh, we have acted according to the overall principle of shoring up the confidence and the strengthening unity, ensuring science-based control and treatment, and imposing targeted measures. And, uh, uh, and after all, all these measures uh, have taken, we have uh, we fought as called a people's war against this outbreak, and uh, we have uh, actually uh, put up a, a very hard struggle and made a tremendous sacrifice in this uh, fight against the, the outbreak. So now the situation in China is moving steadily in a positive uh, direction and life and work are quickly returning to, to normal. But uh, I don't have, uh, because I'm not a very professional in the, in the, in the medical field, so I can't say, I'm afraid I, I, I could not say that I can share some experience in combating this uh, uh, pandemic with all of you, but uh, I want to share some uh, experience. We, which during the last uh, almost three months, we have got through the, the fight uh, with the with the pandemic. Uh, that's uh, first. Uh, I think we have uh, some uh, experience. Or, or said we have done some some works in this regard. Is uh, the first one is uh, we have uh, a strategy against the fight against this pandemic, uh, and uh, as I said, we had a people's war against the outbreak, and 
uh, we have uh, formed a mechanism of collective uh, preventive uh, uh, control and the treatment under the state council and uh, all the co party committees and the government at all levels across the country has that uh, work under this uh, mechanism and uh, we have uh, proposed uh, uh, early de detection prompt, prompt reporting swift isolation and early treatment for to for, to combat this pandemic and the second uh, as uh, as you know that uh, we have made some swift actions like the total lockdown of uh, Hubei province especially Wuhan city I think our friend in Wuhan, he has the, this experience, which he will share with us uh, later. So I, I don't want to go to details in this regard. I think that's uh, the totally lockdown of, uh, of uh, Wuhan, even Hubei province has cut down the spread of the, of the virus in a very uh, useful way. And it's a very useful part of our fight against this, against this uh, pandemic. And in the meantime, not only in Wuhan, in other provinces across China, we have uh, made a very, very useful uh, preventive and control uh, measures to like uh, we persuaded the people to stay at home and to stop social life. And uh, and I think all these measures has proved that they are correct and useful for combating this virus. And uh, at the meantime, uh, we have uh, uh, take very positive measures to to provide the people with the uh, with the essential needs of their daily life and uh, to make them uh, stay uh, calm and stable uh, at home and uh, to, to cooperate with the government and uh, at all levels to, in this fight against this pandemic. And uh, also we have made some uh, measures to, to protect the, the stability of the whole country and the, and the whole system. Uh, I think that's uh, what we have done in, in in China in fighting this uh, in fighting this pandemic. And uh, uh, you, everyone, I think have 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 seen the, the result of this uh, all these measures. The situation now is moving steadily in a positive direction. And uh, every day, the confirmed cases they are. Most are coming uh, are from the, the people they are uh, coming back from from abroad. It's, uh, we don't have uh, any new cases uh, in in China itself. So and uh, by uh, at the same time of uh, combating the the virus, we are making some measures to make life uh, to returning to normal. Uh, and also to resume the function, uh, production, and uh, the business of, of the economy. So now the economy is also is uh, uh, moving to the to the normal direction, and uh, this is the fight in, inside China. And also at the very beginning of this fight, we have uh, a very responsible and transparent manner in dealing in cooperating with the international community in this fight against this, this virus. We have shared the information of the virus at the first time with the WHO and the other international organizations and other international community. And uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, have, uh, good cooperation with the international organizations and other countries 
in the in the in the fighting, uh, not in the uh, in the medical sector and also in, in other in other fields. Uh, and we are very grateful that the at the beginning of this uh, from the beginning of the outbreak, uh, many countries and the international organizations, including Pakistan, has supported China a lot. And especially as we are in Pakistan, we can feel the Pakistanis' uh, good feelings uh, and uh, best hope for the China and the Chinese people. And we are very thankful to that. And you have uh, provided uh, with us uh, very, very uh, uh, the assistance very in a very timely manner. And uh, and. Uh, since now that uh, the the pandemic is, uh, I think is uh, we can see a growing trend here in, in Pakistan. And uh, when we have a very uh, stable situation back in China, now we are uh, starting to cooperate and assist the other countries in fighting this uh, coronavirus. Uh, one step. Uh, expect is to share the experiences like we have to send medical teams to several countries, including Pakistan. There is a Chinese medical team now here in Pakistan. They will now, I think they are in Islamabad now, and they will travel to Lahore and Karachi also, and they will share ex their experiences with the uh, uh, government officials and uh, doctors and about their experiences of uh, how to how to deal with uh, this disease and uh, also we have provided some uh, essential medical goods to Pakistan including uh, face masks uh, PCR keys and uh, uh, ventilators which are mostly needed here in, in Pakistan and also, we are doing this also with uh, uh, with other countries, like some uh, many European countries. Uh, we are very, we are having very good uh, cooperation with them in this regard. So I think that's uh, I I will say just uh, this. If uh, we can have a free discussion, I think maybe after hearing the uh, from other friends. Thank you. Thank you, um, Tang. Um, very uh, useful and uh, informative um, um, points on how China um, made this, um, you know, the remarkable effort. Um, and the experience, of course, shows that how the right policies can make a difference in fighting this epidemic and um, how the China is successfully mitigating its impact. Um, moving on, I think it's um, timely that we can um, give an opportunity to Mr. Harun Noman from Wuhan, uh, who can uh, couple his experience with the previous thought from the uh, Ms. Fang um, and showing his um, volunteering experience in Wuhan um, while this outbreak happened, and, the, and also um, how the lockdown helped in. Um, combating the against this epidemic. So um, let's over. Let's listen to Mr. Harun. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hina. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yes, I think we can all, he all right. hear you. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank you all for this opportunity. And I really like to say thank you to Ms. Fang also for for all the efforts and uh, how much support she is giving to Pakistan also in this time of need. Uh, thank you for that. So I'll, I'll just continue with my experience uh, in Wuhan relating to the, uh, to the volunteer experience I had here. I, I did the volunteer uh, here for more than one and a half months and mostly my, I was doing the job for the, uh, looking after the overseas donation that was coming to Wuhan. That was my major task. So. First of all, uh, I like to show. I like. I like to tell you guys about my experience here in Wuhan. How they, how the China government have 
cope with this uh, whole pandemic. So first of all, uh, I, I agree with Ms. Pang also that first of all, you have to make a very good strategy and have to make a collective measure to co counter this uh, pandemic. And all this requires is a very strong leadership and a sacrifice. So this is a very strong point here that once a decision is made or once a strategy is made, whole country follow that strategy. There is not like this that, okay, let's have a let's have a meeting about it or let's have a discussion about it. Once a strategy is set, whole company whole country follows this thing and the whole com country is like one 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 body you can say whole uh, there is no one going against it so this is a very good thing in this kind of situation that once you make a decision everyone follows this thing there is no 50 50 in this thing uh, this is very important and another thing that was very important which i found here is that uh, the china government did not disrupt any of the supply chain here I mean, here in Pakistan, I'm listening to the news that everyone is worried about okay, how the how the people will get the food, how will get how will people uh, get the medicine and this kind of thing. I think here in China, they make sure the most important things, food and medicines, they the people will get this thing without any problem. They have collect, uh, they have so much big volunteer force, uh, and here in China, the volunteer volunteers are previously established it's not like this the pandemic happens and now we are recruiting the volunteers now we are recruiting the volunteers in china we have so many volunteers which are working for very long there's already established a mechanism here so for example i want to highlight this thing here like in pakistan we have volunteer organization like boy scouts and girl guides i think it's a very good time to reactivate them uh, i was checking the news i think there is a uh, some government response that we can we can activate the vol, uh, the boy scouts also i think it's a very good or uh, uh, very good idea but i think they are doing it not at a very good uh, big pace the, the boy scouts they are already established organization they are already have the infrastructure if you start making a new volunteer group you need a lot of time to train them and you need a very different kind of infrastructure for them so maybe if we can already we can use already established organization and use them it will be a very good thing another good thing about the china they did it is like they make this uh, uh, like for example in pakistan we have pakistan post they have make sure that this kind of things uh, the things for example the necessary things which are coming from other other provinces even in the lockdown in Wuhan, some necessary things, there was never a shortage here. Uh, it, it was very, very strong thing that have uh, that uh, the Chinese government have done that they make sure the people will get all their needs. Uh, so even, even after three months of complete lockdown, uh, there was never a shortage uh, of any, any of the things here in Pakistan, oh, sorry, in, in Wuhan. And another thing that they were uh, doing here for like three months, we were all inside the home. How can we cope up with all of this time? They have introduced a lot of a lot of free online training courses. Also, uh, they have given like English trainings and other other kind of trainings also to people which are for free. So people, even if they're at home, they're still learning and they're still improving their skills. It's not just the kids who are learning from the schools and from the universities. It's also for the people who are like office workers, they're getting the free training courses on free online training courses. So that was uh, that was my experience here. And during uh, and part of this volunteer work, uh, the team leads we have, uh, they were very, very talented. Also, they know what they were doing. They were very professional. And the main thing was they if they need a volunteer, they train them, the volunteers, they spend one day, whole day, let's say online training, give all kind of training and put them in work as soon as possible. It's not like, okay, one day training, two day training, three day training. Okay, we will do like this, we will do like this. Uh, it was not like this. you give the training to volunteer and you utilize them because the main purpose of the volunteers is that your main resources gets free up. So for example, I give you an example, like for my work, most of my work was like paperwork. I have to do a lot of paperwork. So what it helps is that it helps a lot of uh, at the at the storage or at the 
for example a lot of hospital resources they get freed up because i have i have taken over all the paperwork now the paper, the people who are already in those fields they can go on physically to different places and they can they can perform their work that is also true for the police for example in pakistan uh, the police is like on the roads also and trying to control the people to stay at home but here like most of the people who, who helped the police in this case was the volunteers who asked the people to stay at home who deliver the food to the other peoples they were all volunteers so the police they can get free to do the main work uh, that they have to do uh, at this time of crisis so this is just my small experience here in wuhan that i had i ho i hope it was it gives a little insight to you guys also what we were doing here so thank you thank you harun um it was very um useful to understand how um the collective uh, efforts can make a difference um overall um so um, of course um uh, we, we do have uh, lots of uh, strategies and um actions being taken by the government and um one of them is um, the same as in china uh, the, the 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 new volunteer tiger force uh, who are supposed to be working in this regard and um, we have been discussing with this government um, officials in uh, parliamentary um, secretary previously about how uh, we can make this um, efficient and timely um, as well as uh, how we can get them online trainings and um, can facilitate um, the um, the um, you know um the, the the force to uh, make things efficiently and um, do it so um i think uh, moving on uh, it would be um great to hear from uh, mr harun sharif saab to um listen to what has been done so far in pakistan and uh, what has been learned from china what could be replicable um and how we can um you know um learn the, the some some more lessons uh, from our chinese uh, colleagues thank you <clears throat> thank you very much i thought i was on the listening end to learn uh, i will make very brief intervention uh, based on uh, my experience of talking to various people uh, first of all a huge Uh, thanks to our chinese friends who have stood by us and are helping pakistan in knowledge in equipment in expertise and that is something at the time uh, of difficulty which is most valued so i have three uh, very quick uh, uh, comments here uh, number one is although uh, every country is reacting to this you know Uh, uh, as my chinese colleague said pandemic which was taken by surprise now it's all over the world uh, but we need to start thinking a little bit medium term and i would like to put on the radar of my chinese friends uh, that this whole belt and road initiative uh, uh, where markets are to be opened in the neighborhood Uh, so maybe things like china pakistan economic corridor uh, one key pillar which needs to be thought through in future is the partnership on human development so i think that is something because if people are functioning and people are healthy and the systems are ready to deal with such things uh, uh, that will make uh, the economic and social prosperity of the region Uh, so far we do have some social development under cpec uh, but i have mentioned this to the planning minister as well this is something perhaps we need to look at a framework of human development partnership between china and pakistan <clears throat> so that is number one uh, number two is it's very critical uh, that pakistan now moves after the lockdown of two more weeks Uh, to some kind of a hybrid model <clears throat> where you know the essential industries and the essential services uh, the way it has been described in wuhan are restored again and a very strong screening process for instance workers of the factory when they go to work uh, 
they need to be screened properly if somebody, someone is found uh, uh, positive and they need to be you know insulated from the rest of the teams because otherwise uh, particularly the way our cities are uh, planned uh, uh, it would be actually more uh, uh, dangerous to keep people uh, uh, in the lockdown in very small houses and productivity will start going down so number one my point was on the cpac futuristic thinking second is some kind of a hybrid model and that's where in terms of knowledge uh, china and pakistan can help a lot uh, thirdly i just wanted to share that i was looking at the terms of reference of, of this new command and operational control authority being set up uh, uh, this setup is largely done by pakistan uh, uh, army and i th think lots of coordination issues which we have been looking between provinces and the federation agencies uh, uh, might be now improved in the next few days uh, so these are the only three things i would like to add because i was not uh, meant to be anyway presenting something but this is something uh, uh, which can be discussed uh, and you know taken forward thank you very much thank you mr harun sharif um uh, for your um, uh, absolutely um, great, um, the, the three key points, especially in relation to how CPIC can be um, one of the key pillar um, in, um, you know, uh, uh, do, especially on the human development side and the social development side and how it can be help, it can help in this, um, in, in fighting this uh, epidemic in Pakistan and how we can learn from um, uh, from our uh, Chinese friends. Uh, moving on, I think I can take um, this opportunity to um, the uh, director of um, China Study Center at STPI and uh, probably he can add more um, thoughts into this. Um, so over to Mohammed Shakil. Thank you, Dr. Hina. And uh, it was a pleasure to listen uh, from our friend from China, Bessie, and uh, uh, Harun Sharif and Harun Narman. I think much has been said. So, but uh, I think there are two or three lessons which are very important, which Pakistan have to learn from China if we have to continue to work with China. And second, if we have to successfully counter this uh, COVID-19. First of all, the institutional mechanism of China these are very important to study the reason we people lot uh, people lot uh, talk about china was successful but mr as mr harun naman was talking about the one aspect of the institutional advantage how they implement the other thing is how the policy uh, decision making is being done is the decision making is taking too much time to talking talking and talking or somebody is here at the helm of the job who make a decision the rest of the institutional framework and all the actors of uh, the implementation sector they are working accordingly that is the strength which china has which months there the president xi jinping has announced there would be lockdown so nobody question about that what would be negative impact what would be the positive impact everybody was following it so we need some mechanism if we want to learn from china or we want to replicate the success story of china and pakistan so how to make a strong decision and the rest of the whole uh, institution and uh, all the actors have to follow it one thing and second thing what institution have the strength and the state have the strength it, there is a very important question as our prime minister is talking again and again so they cannot afford to lock down the country because they cannot sustain the supply chain of essentials so but china had that strength to sustain the supply chain of essentials like food or medical there were no disruption everything was going smoothly and everybody was knowing what they were doing one thing and second thing the water resources state have so chinese state they have the immense resources they can put a lot of resources to say support these supply chains to support all the institution what they were doing and a third thing is which is very important how quickly they implement the decision like they decided to build a hospital of 1000 bed and they did it within 10 days there are two things one there was a very clear instructions. Second, institutions fall in line. Either they were the financial institutions, or they were the construction institution, or they were the security institutions. Everybody fall in line within 
no time and second element was so financial sources they had to support the construction they did not have to look to outward or somebody else to provide them and the third thing which they had the supply chain of medical if we look at the statistics of the world the so china is a you can say the factory of production of the medical supplies they are supplying the medical equipment they are supplying the medicine to whole world so they have with them all the required instruments like ventilators or some other things so they had all the instruments with them so they were successful in countering no pakistan can learn but not the fully pakistan can implement but not the fully what china have implemented so we need to be very rational when uh, when developing our strategy or advising to the government we cannot say ask the government to even replicate the exact model of china because the chinese have different institutional mechanism or institutional advantage they have different resources and they are the production hub of all the medical supplies for the world that is the one part and second part which i wanted to touch which mr harun sharif has already also touched so there would be the change in the strategy of the investment of china in the future they will be moving more towards the human development sector or they can we can say in the broader context they will be looking more towards non security non traditional security areas in non traditional security areas pandemics and the human resource or something like that that will get the more uh, importance or they will build the more prominent one thing and second thing the investment will be become more people oriented it is uh, these are always oriented people oriented but it will become more people oriented where the people can get the direct benefit the capacities of people can be built the human resource or the human capital will be built more efficiently because this incident of a covid 19 has shown that the governments alone cannot handle the problem they need the cooperation from everybody from society as harun naman was talking about the volunteers were doing the bulk of the work to sensitize people to aware people to ask them to stay at the home so this can be done through only if we have if the countries have good quality human capital the human resource who can understand who can disseminate who which can be used at the time of the need so there would be we are expecting there would be one change in the future investment under bri or the cpac that would be more focus will shift towards the human resource and the human capital health education or the also the technological capabilities of those human resource for that they will the the, the big infrastructure investment like we are talking about right now the roads or something big plants maybe go to the back foot not the back foot but maybe the some employee they will their resources may be diverted from them there towards the human resource and the human capital development so accordingly pakistan will have to devise their own strategy one for the covid and uh, covid 19 and other is for the cpac and future investments how pakistan can benefit and how pakistan can work with china to make it more appropriate and relevant for the people thank you dr hina so now we can go for the question and answer as our uh, colleague from the embassy he has to leave as the 3:30 uh, um sure shakil sahab i think uh, with this thank you for your um, comments Uh, mentioning about how um, Pakistan China economic corridor and Pakistan China's long lasting friendship can actually complement um, um, each other in uh, combating um, this crisis um, i think we 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 do have uh, questions coming in already in the comment box um, in the right so but i would encourage dr mehmood khwaja to please um, if you could um, um, switch off your um if you if you can ask the questions directly to um mr harun sharif another one is to dr vakar so over to you mr dr mahmood uh okay so i think dr mahmood's voice system um Uh, cannot work so he has um, given two questions the first one goes for mr harun sharif that is human development need is just an idea at the moment or some work has already been initiated regarding the very specific need required if so uh, if he can share some details um, it would be great so if uh, mr harun sharif can comment on this 
<clears throat> well, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the there was a meeting planned uh, uh, of the Joint Commission in April, and uh, that will be difficult. Uh, but in the revised dialogue, when I was in the government and whatever I've heard from uh, the new CPEC authority and the minister, uh, social development and agriculture sector has already uh, been discussed as a priority in CPEC. But the specific of human development, you know, from a workforce perspective and the health perspective, and the industrial investments in the health sector, it has not been a priority so far. Obviously, we were not expecting this pandemic. Uh, uh, what I genuinely uh, 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 request the uh, thought leaders and researchers uh, to start working on some models because government has very limited capability and they are trying to deal with the crisis uh, so that you know that particular issue uh, can be highlighted both from technical angles, but also from the fiscal resources angle, because I see huge fiscal pressures coming on Pakistan and the rest of the world for the next uh, uh, two years, 2020 and 21. Everybody has to rebuild the economies. So we need to look at, you know, how priorities can be adjusted. Something has to be left aside, uh, uh, which was a priority now and this thing should come as a priority. So I would like to urge that people need to work on that. At this point in time, unless the next meeting takes place, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this was not the top priority in the future partnership. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. Harun. I think we have another question from Dr. Uh, Mehmood to Dr. Vakar, is how and by whom some initiative can be taken in South Asia? Um, would SARC work? So this is the question that we receive in the to the messages. So over to you, Dr. Vakar. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, certainly a very pertinent question. Uh, regional approaches are always welcome. Um, while uh, SARC uh, health bodies have already been meeting through online platforms, and there was a head of state meeting as well, which from Pakistan side was attended by Dr. Zafar Mirza. But of course, uh, things in SARC uh, still look pretty cold and uh, one doesn't expect uh, any uh, uh, sort of uh, quick outcomes from the first meeting, uh, which was uh, conducted online uh, two weeks back. But of course, there are sub-regional uh, arrangements available to SARC member countries. And of course, there are bilateral arrangements as well, which are available to them. And certainly a proactive um, approach towards contacting or engaging with neighbors is, is always uh, welcome. Uh, maybe one of the things for uh, uh, STPI and our researchers, and, and this is where probably I can also come in and, and probably submit a question to our esteemed colleagues at the embassy as well as uh, Mr. Shakil, uh, 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 what role uh, can we sort of envisage going forward for policy think tanks like STPI? Uh, taking cue from uh, the title of today's online uh, webinar, one would uh, sort of expect that STPI should be working more closely with uh, Chinese think tanks if this learning has to be formalized, institutionalized, and if we can um, sort of extract some uh, research questions, one of them was rightly uh, put by uh, Mr. Shakil, where he suggested that opportunities under uh, CPEC or China-Pakistan FTA uh, could certainly help to create uh, greater and deeper value chains in health sector, food sector, uh, in the current crisis phase and the post-crisis phase. So, so maybe my 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 question to both uh, our colleagues at the Chinese embassy, uh, to to Mr. Shakil Rame, uh, on on how best Pakistan uh, Pakistan's think tanks can can capitalize this this. Um, opportunity in crisis and, and uh, sort of uh, develop a deeper engagement with Chinese think tanks. Thank you.
I think uh, I will, uh, we would like to listen first from a, China, a colleague from the China embassy, then I will chip in. Very uh, good question. You know that uh, uh, actually the embassy we have uh, in uh, pay great attention to the to the importance uh, of the think tanks. So and also we all also have a very close and good cooperation with uh, think tanks in Pakistan, uh, like SDPI and some other think tanks. Uh, I think the think tanks research can be a very input to to every relations and the cooperations and uh, uh, about the think tanks uh, uh, ex exchange uh, views uh, think, uh, between the uh, Pakistani think tank with the Chinese think tanks is so also uh, uh, very important and uh, I think we have. Uh, uh, had this uh, kind of uh, cooperation or collaboration in, in the in the past, and uh, the embassy is doing our best to to promote the further uh, coordination and the collaboration between the think tanks of the two countries. Uh, since uh, as uh, most of you mentioned, the CPAC projects, like we said, the CPAC is uh, now in a new stage and new phase. So uh, in the new stage, uh, we will, uh, I think we will more focus on the cooperation uh, on the social economic sector, on education sector, on agricultural sector, and uh, SEZs, which we are working very closely with our Pakistani colleagues in this regard. I think the Think tanks input in all these fields are uh, also very important, and uh, I think the embassy will be some some channel for the for the cooperation between the think tanks of the two countries. If you have uh, some good ideas and good suggestions, we you can share with us. We can we can talk in details. Thank you. I believe um, Shaquille is having some 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 issues with this um, thing the, the call due to some network probably um, issues. Um, I think we can um, move on to any other questions. No, I can. No, I can hear. Oh, perfect. No, so, I can. Um, no, would I you like to add on to Ms., what Mr. Um, Ms. Pang uh, mentioned about how think tanks can uh, collaborate between the two countries and um, have a added on benefit to um, jointly and make collective efforts to combat this crisis? Yeah, uh, thank you, Ms. Fang, for uh, her uh, useful comments. And uh, I built on that what she said. So definitely the China Embassy has already working uh, with the different think tanks in Pakistan. And uh, we are very pleased to know that. So they are always uh, looking forward to work with SDPI, whenever we ask them to work with SDPI, they are more than willing. So that is a very good uh, initiative they are already have taken. But uh, I just want to also inform the uh, audience about uh, what initiative, uh, other initiative than this we are taking at this point of time. On a Monday, we are having a one conference of think tank of all the BRI countries. So uh, that is another platform which is called the Belt and Road uh, Initiative Platform. So we are the think tanks from all of the BRI countries, they are uh, working together. So there are 70 uh, participants in that uh, conference and from different countries, including from uh, Central Asia, South Asia, North America, Europe, Middle East and everywhere. So we will be discussing about how the think tanks come, can come forward and how they can share their experience and how they can work with the governments so they can help governments to combat this problem of the COVID. And second agenda of this uh, of that meeting is to look forward how the BRI investment will be changing and what role a uh, think tank should play at this point of time to advise their governments. So how governments should plan their future interventions and how China should work with the different governments across the world to look into how the investments can be made, make more relevant from the human development. And third point is 
so how beer can help to revive the economy of the world because after that we, there, there would be need of the huge investment for taking care of uh, economic uh, losses the economic impacts so as we know that the ca bri would be the eight to nine trillion dollar investment till 2030 so we are looking forward how bri can lead the process how bri can help it uh, can extend a hand uh, helping hand to all the countries not only the bri countries but also to the non-bri countries and where the supply chains can also work to uh, to revive the economy as um, uh, we are looking at a few days back three or four days back as a spokesperson of china on office day he has uh, categorically mentioned so china will be looking forward uh, to uh, increase ex imports from all the countries and i think to increase the imports from all the countries that would be a really good initiative to give them the some fiscal space to the countries uh, so they can uh, revive their economies that would be a good a good initiative especially if we look into the context of the recent projection from oecd so oecd has pred predicted that in 2021 the economy the growth the gdp growth rate of china would be 6.4 percent that is a good news because if the chinese economy will revive uh, their uh, growth rate to the 6.4 uh, percent that means it will give a hope to the rest of the world by creating linkages and strengthening the other supply chains so they can benefit from there and second thing which i want to mention to uh, further to uh, enhance the work of uh, think tanks right now the strategy of the uh, chinese government is to engage uh, all the think tanks to the other official channels i think that strategy is a uh, was working for china for a long time but as the role of china is uh, now that changing is that uh, the china is becoming uh, as a major player at the global level and they are extending a uh, hand to everybody so maybe they have to uh, look from some other models from the world like us or the european union how they are working with the think tanks it is not always the government uh, the, the funding their resources they are also encouraging the other private sector organizations like uh, uh, microsoft like uh, uh, the think tanks like the Brookings institute and all other their companies they were encouraging them to work directly with the think tanks across the world for example in pakistan uh, the microsoft is implementing one program on the education that is a very critical for the human capital so can china replicate this model of that is encouraging their uh, groups like alibaba like huawei like other companies to work with the private think tanks so they can work on these all initiatives it should not be like always like the government because government is too busy with all other sectors like china has to deal with supplies china has to deal with the economy china has to deal with a number of issues so the role of the private sector should be increased from the chinese side to work with the think tanks and i think that will be helpful in the future and other important institution which can also play a good role that is the cas china academy of social sciences they can also for some uh, uh, collaborations with other think tanks across the world so they can also take a lead rather than uh, the countries uh, the think tanks from other countries like uh, from south asia central asia they look towards the chinese embassy or the chinese government so they can countries can build linkages with the relevant departments in the chinese academy of social sciences and they can take a lead especially if they have the uh, resources to work there and third thing i think the one a very important element which i was which we are discussing in the belt and road initiative also are also with other some other friends china also have to come with some innovative ideas like we are witnessing like that the world economic forum so that forum has been erected to take care of the economic needs so china's slogan is the world pro is the prosperity shared prosperity so china have to should work on the some forums like that the world shared prosperity forum through that think tanks it would really help i think uh, the think tanks can really play a good role because they know their own countries and they know how the systems work and they know where to work and how to engage people if china can a uh, little bit change their strategy to uh, go from the formal government linkages to the private linkages, that will be really helpful Thank you, Shaquille, um, for letting us know about this upcoming uh, webinar on how the BRI initiative can serve its role in the countries, can play its part to um, make the efforts more um, concrete and providing us really the, you know, um, 
the excellent strategies um, that one could do and possible collaborations with Chinese institutions. Um, if I can add, uh, I think the other institutions, we have Chinese Academy of Sciences and um, the other um, academia and uh, research bodies are also keenly interested to you know, work on uh, similar kind of um, um, strategies and measures that one could take. Um, moving on, uh, we, we do have uh, more questions from the audience. And I think Mubeen uh, would like to um, uh, have, uh, have some some of his um, queries to um, um, to. Um, yes, sir. I think, Thank you, Dr. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is uh, Mubeen Ali from STPI. I have a question for our uh, friend from the Chinese embassy. I just wanted to ask uh, that uh, as China is in the post-lockdown stage. Uh, we uh, need, uh, can you give any policy advice in this regard on how to manage the post-lockdown stage and to prevent some sort of a relapse and uh, spread so we just don't go back to where we started? Um, uh, especially policy advice in this regard specific to Pakistan, if uh, you can answer that for me. Thank you. I didn't catch very clearly. What's the China is uh, adopting what? I just wanted to ask if you could uh, give give us some policy advice uh, regarding uh, the managing of the post lockdown stage so we can prevent um, a relapse in the spread of the COVID-19. Can you give us some advice in this regard? Post, post lo lockdown stage. Of course. Yeah, post lockdown stage. Post Post the lockdown stage. Yes. You yes. Mean nowadays. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't. Thank I you. didn't get very clearly. So now you know that uh, I maybe I'm not sure if I'm right. We are in a new stage of in China of fighting this uh, virus. Because uh, uh, at the first stage we locked down all the uh, Hubei province and uh, other big cities there. Uh, according to our local governments, have a uh, partial lockdown. And it's, uh, as we said, the situation is uh, more stabilized. And the uh, life has uh, become uh, becoming normal these days. People are back to work and shops are open. And now we are in a new stage of uh, to prevent the, uh, uh, how to how to say the spread of the virus uh, from outside China back to China? So I mean, you 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 mean this uh, this state? We are in this state, right? My understanding, I think, is right. Yes, yes, uh, so I'm talking about. We have taken some measures. Uh, uh, we only have uh, uh, have uh, very strict measures uh, about uh, in the airports and also the, the border check posts of uh, is uh, for the for the, for the temperature temperature checking and uh, and also uh, for the for the uh, for some uh, forms of uh, your your travel travel history and uh, for for the old uh, main cities like Beijing uh, we have reduced the international flights uh, uh, to Beijing, and all the passengers they will not uh, in these days they will they will not uh, be taken to Beijing directly. They will to to take to some uh, other cities uh, around Beijing for isolation for quarantine for 14 days, and during these 14 days they will be tested about about the, the virus. If there is no problem, so we will arrange them to, to go to Beijing. And uh, I think other cities at the airports, they have uh, we have taken we have taken very strict measures of the of the of the controlling and uh, all the big cities I think maybe like Shanghai, uh, all the passengers arriving in Shanghai will be uh, Quarantined uh, for 14 days before before they, they go back to their work or to their or to their families. They will be quarantined at at one place. 
So I think that's that's the that's the measures now we are taking. Thank you so much for the for, for, for the response. Uh, we have some more questions coming in, and I think in continuation to um, um, the question to uh, Mr. Pang right now, uh, we do have uh, Dr. Mahmoud's question. Um, uh, unfortunately, his voice system is not working. So he just wanted to um, understand that how COVID um, spread it so uh, rapidly in in such such a short time. Um, I mean, if the medical equipment and the medical needs were already in place, uh, if not, then how these were met in the shortest time to minimize the casualties. So, um, and the, that's one of the question to. I think I'll just gather um, a few more questions. Um, and then probably you can uh, respond. Um, uh, so any one of you, if you have uh, any other question to uh, Ms. Pan? Yes, Sina, you have a question? Sure. So I just want to ask, uh, as we know, due to the COVID-19, Pakistani trade will go down. It is estimated as coming from 10% uh, to the 15%. So. Yeah, one thing and second thing so pakistan the hot money is flowing back from pakistan so there would be the pressure on pakistan rupee in coming days so how china can help pakistan to uh, to improve our exports if we go down from the 50 percent as it has been made, so china can china help pakistan to overcome this loss in can China help Pakistan to say to uh, stabilize uh, the, uh, our uh, the value of our rupee? Thank you. Any more question to Ms. Pang, and then I think she can respond to three of them. I think there's no more question to Ms. Pang. So if you would like to respond to the two of the questions by Dr. Mahmood uh, about just to understand how this happened so rapidly um, uh, and how did you counter and shut up in such a shortest time. And then um, question from Mr. Shaquille about the trade. Spang, if you can, uh, you would like to respond, please. The question uh, was, that I was, uh, I was thinking of uh, have one of my colleagues from the medical team to be here today, but uh, they have a very tight schedule today, so they could not come. So I'm afraid I could not give a very professional answer of the of the first question. Uh, you know that uh, I think the uh, the coronavirus is a normal one. Normal virus is has, hasn't been seen in the past. So I think it's uh, for this detection, this research and testing and the confirmation. Usually, naturally, we need more time. And actually, as uh, all of you know, that the first case was. Uh, uh, found in China uh, at uh, late December 2019, and at the first stage, uh, I don't think the doctors know what the, this kind of novel virus is. So they done, they have done, they did a lot of this research work in this regard, and then they, they found that there is a totally new, totally new new kind of virus. Uh, a uh, new, new, new type of a coronavirus. So, and uh, I think, and the local, local authority after this, uh, they have uh, uh, reported to the central government, to, to our NHC in China, and, uh, and the NHC has sent uh, an expert group to Wuhan 
to investigate the the new virus uh, just after after, uh, after two days. And on January 3rd of uh, 2020, uh, China started to send very timely updates to WHO and other countries, including the US, about this uh, uh, this uh, new coronavirus. And on January the 11th, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention put online five whole sequences of the novel coronavirus and shared it, the data with the world and the WHO. So I think, and just on November 23rd, Wuhan was put under lockdown. And uh, uh, we have taken a uh, very comprehensive and thorough and uh, measures to 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 counter the spread of of this virus. But I think now the the doctors and the professionals they are working very hard to try to find the the uh, medicine and vaccine of of this uh, this virus. Uh, uh, we hope it will come as soon as possible, but nobody can say very exactly when it will come. But uh, we do have, uh, according to our experience, we the Chinese experts, they have given some uh, uh, prevention measures, which uh, this is the second edition of the handbook of COVID-19 prevention and the treatment. We have shared this with our Pakistani colleagues. And I hope this will be very useful for our Pakistani friends to in, in the fight against this virus. Uh, I think this that's for, for for the first question. I I, I wonder if it's uh, it's clear or not. So thank you, Mr. Um, Ms. Pang. I think we can um, move on to a next question from uh, Hanya Shah. If Hanya, you can unmute your mic, please. Uh, yes. Uh, can everybody hear me? Um, yes, I just want to confirm. Yes, okay, all right. So, uh, hello everyone. This is Hania Shah, and I'm working as a research associate in FTBI. I would like to um, ask a few questions uh, to the madam from uh, Chinese embassy. Uh, my first question would be uh, how China is helping the other countries in dealing with the COVID-19. And uh, secondly, I would like to know uh, what challenges China is facing from US and Western countries? Just a general uh, perspective from a uh, Chinese counterpart would uh, be very much good for me. Um, thank you so much. Ms. Pang, if you would like to respond to Wanya's question, or shall she? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I think uh, now China is, uh, uh, except for sharing experience of this fighting of this uh, coronavirus with the whole world, we are actually very actively uh, cooperate with uh, other countries in fighting this uh, coronavirus. Like we have sent uh, medical teams to to Italy, to Russia, to Pakistan, to, to many countries. And uh, I think the medical teams will uh, assess the situation in the different countries and share the experience of how to prevent and how to control this disease where they are with their professional colleagues of, uh, of the countries. And uh, I think this will be very useful for these countries in the fight against this virus. And uh, also we are providing uh, some uh, 
uh, medical assistance to, to some countries, uh, including Pakistan. The, as I said, we have provided uh, some, uh, uh, we are in close uh, coordination and cooperation with the uh, Ministry of Health and the NDMA here, and also the, the Army. We are, very, we are working very closely with them to help Pakistan to, to, to fight this, this virus. We provide uh, face masks, ventilators, and uh, 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 preventive uh, clothes for the for the doctors and the nurses. And uh, I think the first two batches has arrived in Pakistan, and uh, the NDMA will will dispatch all these goods to the to the various. Uh, cities and and, uh, and regions in, in Pakistan. And I think more uh, assistance are, are coming to Pakistan in the coming days, except the government and the, the Chinese companies and uh, like uh, uh, most of the companies working for the CPAP projects, they are doing their part in helping the uh, local communities here in Pakistan. And also the Alibaba Fund has uh, provided some assistance uh, to, to Pakistan, which I, I think you must have got the news. Uh, uh, you must have got information from, from the news, from the media. Uh, I think in the, the, the coronavirus, there's uh, it's a revenging across the, across the world. And uh, there is no border for, for this for this virus. For the all the countries and the, and the people around the world, we must work together in in this fight against this virus. Uh, regarding your second question, I think there is uh, some uh, noises are coming from uh, some uh, United States and and some other European countries. Uh, I think it's not. Uh, very good with the current atmosphere of the unity against the pandemic of the whole world. Uh, as I said before, the, the, the virus, they, they don't know the border of, of any countries. And, uh, uh, but China has, uh, we have done a lot, uh, take very strict and prompt measures to counter this uh, uh, disease. And uh, for the WHO's estimation that the decisive, effective and the timely measures taken by the Chinese government prevented the infection of tens of thousands of people. And many countries also think China's practice offers uh, precedence for them to in this fight against this virus. Our open, transparent and responsible attitude has been highly acclaimed by the international community. Uh, we don't have any intention to judge other countries' response to the pandemic. But uh, while China set an example and brought precious time to the world, this huge efforts and sacrifice, and as uh, just as uh, WHO and the foreign leaders, experts and media say. I think uh, its government knows, uh, some of the governments, they know it well. And uh, the people, they can feel that too. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for your responses and comments um, made um, for such intense can I, questions. Can I add, can I add sure. something here, Dr. Sure, Shuki. Yeah, so the problem I think so which we are facing at the global level at this point of time. So US is trying, was trying to capitalize this opportunity just to contain China. There's a whole dream of uh, USA to contain China for, by one and other way. But unfortunately, they could not foresee the impact of a disease, and that is uh, also hitting uh, USA. 
the us behavior with the china is not only with china us is also uh, distancing itself from uh, our, uh, her own allies like from european countries they put a ban from the europe without even consulting the european countries within european countries there are some things that are also happening like at the first instance when italy was asking to the european union to supply them some medical uh, medical equipment but rather than supplying the medical equipment France and Germany, they put a ban res restrictions on the export of the medical supplies. So that is another way around. So the COVID, they have also shown the, you can say the, show the character of different countries. The European Union was champion of the solidarity with all the countries, but they could not uh, come forward to help its own European Union countries. Even Serbia is looking toward China, Italy is looking toward China, and so many other countries. And one is another very important thing is happening: China and Russia. They are sending all the supplies to uh, European countries and even to US. Despite all the negativity being created by US and their allies, Russia and China is still supplying them uh, the medical uh, medical uh, equipment and their medicines. So the things are changing very quickly. We have to look at that. So China as uh, Americans, they also have to learn that the opposition cannot work anymore. So the epidemics like the COVID-19, they don't respect the border. They need cooperation to combat the challenge, not the conflict. If they don't learn, so everybody will be on the losing end. Thank you. Thank you, Shakil, um, for adding on to um, Ma'am's response to the question about how they are um, helping the other countries um, as well and providing support to fight with this uh, COVID-19. Uh, with this, I would like to welcome Dr. Abed, uh, Executive Director of STPI, to join us for this session and um, say his remarks. Over to you, Dr. Abed. Mm, well, thank you, uh, Ina. First of all, my apologies. Uh, I couldn't uh, join the board proceedings uh, as there was a parallel uh, meeting, but uh, I was uh, able to uh, listen to the question answers uh, uh, by the Excellency uh, from uh, Chinese uh, Embassy. Uh, just wanted to uh, say, uh, not only thank both the panelists, uh, Arun Sharif, who I believe has uh, already uh, spoken, uh, that uh, for sparing uh, their time uh, to be with us uh, today. Uh, when we uh, look at uh, the pandemics, and uh, yesterday I think was the most alarming for us because uh, in last 24 hours, the number of cases, it was the highest number of cases reported uh, confirmed in Pakistan, it is uh, 252. So when I compare this uh, with the 12th of March, when we only had 21 cases, and uh, right now, when we are about to hit 2300, so uh, that sort of uh, scares me. I'm also mindful of the fact that uh, there would be uh, a third wave of uh, uh, these uh, contaminated uh, uh, cases, this infection. And the th by third wave, I mean, uh, the after the lockdown partial or complete uh, the exodus of uh, daily wages and uh, many of uh, the industrial workers who left the uh, uh, cities like Karachi and Lahore and other large cities and who went back to their uh, villages uh, to the rural areas uh, if uh, one or two percent of them they uh, are potential carriers I think uh, that would uh, generate a whole new wave of dissemination of uh, uh, disease in our uh, rural areas and especially in Punjab where uh, uh, we uh, give 80 percent of our wheat comes from Punjab and wheat harvesting season would be starting from 15th of April so now my major concern right now is that uh, if uh, in next 11 days or 12 days if we not if we are not prepared uh, at our uh, rural areas at our villages uh, then uh, of course uh, post uh, uh, pandemic, uh, we must also uh, get re ready uh, for some sort of uh, uh, weed scarcity, which can be extremely bad. So this uh, advanced planning, of course, uh, it's extremely important. Uh, while uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Deputy uh, uh, Ambassador from China is with us, I request her to also uh, think of uh, building government's capacity or providing some sort of uh, uh, tips and assist uh, some sort of uh, personal protection equipment for uh, agriculture workers. 
uh, so far, uh, our whole focus uh, uh, fighting this disease is very urban focused. Now, as we say that uh, uh, Corona doesn't distinguish between rich and poor, it doesn't distinguish between urban dwellers and uh, rural communities. Urban dwellers, uh, we in large cities, we still have some sort of uh, uh, hospitals, we still have some sort of uh, healthcare infrastructure. Yes, it's not sufficient uh, to uh, take care of our needs, but uh, it is there. But uh, in small towns and in small vill villages, we don't have it. And perhaps uh, now we need a targeted assistant and a targeted uh, 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 focus uh, so that we uh, get prepared at a village level, at a rural districts. So for example, we should prepare that how many ventilators are there in Sialkot, how many ventilators uh, are there in Narwal, are in Vihari, are in uh, Chichawatni, all the small uh, towns, which are not uh, the uh, major uh, cities. Uh, and uh, when we talk to uh, different bilateral or multilateral organizations uh, for any technical assistance or medical assistance, I think uh, now is the time that we should also start pinpointing to districts. Uh, and rather, I would uh, suggest uh, through this forum uh, that uh, we should uh, request uh, the bilateral uh, friendly countries to own a district. Uh, so if they own any particular district where they would be able to help, uh, I think, uh, that may be another way of providing targeted help so that it doesn't contain only in federal and provincial capitals. I'll stop here. Thanks, Dr. Abid. Um, Ms. Pang from, from Embassy of China. Um, Ma'am, would you like to add some comment on this or shall I continue with the question answers? Your mic is muted, ma'am. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Abid, for your for your kind words. So I think we are we are doing our our best to help our Pakistani friend in in this uh, in this kind in this fight against the virus. Uh, from the government level, we have uh, provided uh, assistance to the government, and also I think uh, we have many uh, sister provinces and sister uh, and the cities in China. They are trying their best to help their 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 sister province or sister cities in in Pakistan. I think this uh, kind of uh, assistance is uh, will come in, in the in the very near future. So, and uh, I think we will work closely and uh, with our uh, Pakistani colleagues to 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 use or to to use and utilize this uh, this uh, assistance to to make it the as assistance to reach to to the to the districts and the, and the 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 ordinary people. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pan. Um, I think Pan uh, uh, has to leave um, a few minutes. So I think I would encourage uh, one more question from her, if there is any, or um, we would like to also request if uh, STPI can also have a copy of the book that you mentioned, uh, Your Excellency, and then uh, we can benefit from the from the findings and um, can really learn on because um, at the end of this seminar we should also be expecting a another kind of uh, policy brief from STPI on how we can learn from um, China and how the lessons can be replicated. So uh, would it be possible for for us to have a copy of this book? Or maybe you can send it a uh, soft copy to us. We can uh, take uh, uh, printouts. Yeah, we can send the soft copy to you. And I think we have two editions. One is from the government level. This is from the, the some uh, uh, 
uh, this is from the Jack Ma Foundation and uh, the Georgian University. But uh, the, I think the content is almost uh, the same. We can send you the soft, soft linkage, so you can you can print it out, and also I think you can use it on your website. So to let more people to have the opportunity opportunity to to read it. That's great. Um, thank you, Your Excellency, for your time and um, for your valuable insights on how China, Pakistan can um, uh, make collective efforts in this time of the crisis and how the Chinese experience can um, be replicated in terms of um, uh, Pakistan's um, strategies and measures towards this um, uh, COVID-19. Um, so, uh, with this, we would like to um, say thank you to you and um, also to your colleagues and uh, giving us this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more comments or um, insights to the today's talk or seminar? I think we have Shaquille with us already and Harun Noman from Mohan. So, um, since Dr. Abid has just joined in, if I could recap. Um, Harun Noman is from Wuhan and he has given his um, thoughts and experience on uh, volunteering in the lockdown and the time of the crisis in Hubei province in Wuhan city. So that was very useful in terms of how Chinese government took um, concrete actions and measures towards um, uh, making, you know, towards um, combating um, this um, COVID-19 crisis and um timely efforts to prevent and rebound from this epidemic so one could easily um you know understand how uh, we could also learn the um some some um strategies and insights um especially in terms of how online trainings that stpi had been talking about could be helpful in this regard uh, to the pm's volunteer force and some other uh, platforms where we could we could have a added on um, value to the effort. Um, Shaquille, do you have anything to add? I think that you have summarized it in a very good way. And it's good to know that it's good to know that Harun Naman Sahib also wanted to know that some Pakistani who are really on the front line are working on So thank you so much, Harun, for giving time and uh, sharing your experience. Especially, जो के मैं institution पे बात करना चाह रहा था उसको reinforce किया उसको कि किस तरह वो सारे का सारा उसको ले के आगे चल रहे हैं. Thank you so much. Nice, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank Harun you, Harun. आपका मैं शुक्रिया दान नहीं कर सका पहले. Thank you very much. अब वो हम से आपने हमें join किया. It's great, and I look forward to see the proceeding of this seminar to know about your interventions more. Thank you so much, sir. It was my honor to join you guys. With this, I think uh, we come to an end. Yes. Shakil, Is Harun Sharif Sahib here? Or he has left? Harun Sharif Sahib? He has left, I guess. Oh, yes, he has left. Okay. okay. Look forward. Yes. Okay, I think uh, we can. Um, um, call this off for today's um, meeting and a webinar. I think it was very useful and uh, we had some um, great insights to the uh, to the uh, topic and how we can take benefit um, from, we had the right representatives from um, uh, different fields and I think we can easily um, uh, come up with some really good actions and provide some measures. So uh, with this, um, if I can also um, let you, all my colleagues know that we're also preparing a policy brief on it. Initially, uh, it was meant to be lessons from Wuhan, Japan, and South Korea. And I've also requested Harun Noman to have some interventions uh, in lessons from China. So we sh it, sh it should be um, uh, finalized by the end of this week, that is tomorrow. So hopefully um, it should be disseminated in terms of um, right policy recommendations that could be given to 
not only the, the, the Chinese counterparts or stakeholders, but also in terms of CPEC authority or um, some other um, the targeted audience uh, we can um, link up to. So thank you, Dr. Abid, for your time and for joining us um, despite your busy schedule for the other meetings and all my other colleagues, Ahad, Sophia, Fatima, um, to join us this uh, afternoon. And thank you, Harun Noman, for joining us all the way from China. So thank you all. Thank you so much.